Welcome everyone to another episode of Retro Wrestling Reviews. Fred Esparza here and this week we look back at Mid-South Wrestling's April 8th, 1982 show. But before we get to the review, be sure to click that subscribe button. We'll have more wrestling show reviews as well as the Lucha World podcast and other content available. This episode of Mid-South Wrestling was taped on March 31st, 1982 at the Irish McNeil Boys Club in Shreveport, Louisiana. Boyd Pierce and Cowboy Bill Watts on commentary this week. They recap the Big Cat Ernie Ladd being attacked by Skandar Akbar, the Samoans, and the One Man Gang. That was followed by a recap of the Samoans beating the Junkyard Dog and Mike George to win the Mid-South Tag Team titles. The first match on the show had the One Man Gang with General Skandar Akbar beat Mike Boyer after a big splash. This was a short match with One Man Gang tossing Boyer around like a rag doll. At one point, Boyer got up charged that gang with a shoulder tackle and bounced right off of him. That was a great bump by Boyer. Gang just kept beating him with several elbows and slams him to lead to the big splash and the win. That was then followed by the Wild Samoans Afan Sika with General Skandar Akbar beating Buddy Landell and Iron Mike Sharp after Sika got Landell with a Samoan drop for the pin. Before that match started, Akbar asked Reezer Bowden for the mic and wanted to know who Ernie Ladd's mystery partner would be. Bowden told him that they didn't know and he should take that up with matchmaker Grizzly Smith. This was a competitive match with Sharp using his strength and Landell his quickness to get in some offense on the Samoans. Late in the match, Sharp was beating on both Samoans. He missed a shoulder tackle but was able to get one of the Samoans in a bear hug. But I believe it was Afa who ended up escaping the bear hug. Sika then came in and Landell missed the missile drop kick. Landell then ducked the clothesline by Sika, but Afa ended up catching him with a clothesline instead. Sika then grabbed Landell and dropped him with a Samoan drop for the pin. Uh, Reza Bowden then interviewed the big cat Ernie Ladd in the ring. Ladd told Bowden that he's not telling anyone who his partner is. General Skandar Akbar showed up and he and Ladd started arguing with each other. Ladd then attacked Akbar. The Samoans ran out and attacked Ladd. That then led to the assassin running in and helping Ladd. Ladd and the assassin cleaned house. Reezer Bowden got back in the ring to interview Ladd. The assassin said if Akbar's army wants a war, that was exactly what they were going to get. After that segment, we had Tully Blanchard beating Kokoa Samoa after, after Tully caught Kokoa Samoa with a standing suplex for the pin. This was the best match on the show and was worked at a faster pace than everything else on the show. Some fast paced sequences, especially early in the match. Um, Kokoa Samoa caught Blanchard with a chop that caused Tully to back away and he asked for a timeout. He then snuck back in and kneed Kokoa Samoa and then tossed him to the outside. When Kokoa Samoa tried to get back in, Tully got him with a few punches. Um, Kokoa Samoa then ended up leaping back in off the top rope and caught Tully with a sunset flip, but Blanchard was able to escape. He then whipped Kokoa Samoa into the ropes and caught him with a slingshot into the top rope. Blanchard then was able to get him with, in the pin after a standing suplex. After that match, we get the Junkyard Dog beating Wayne Ferris, best known as the Honky Talk Man. JYD used the big thump power slam to get the win. Watts during this match started talking about Grizzly Smith wanting to start a bench press competition among the wrestlers. This was a very competitive match with Ferris early on complaining a few times about his hair getting pulled by JYD. Um, the Junkyard Dog used a lot of punches on Ferris. Ferris at one point kicked JYD and climbed to the middle rope and dropped an elbow on him for a near fall. Ferris continued to throw punches, but JYD got fired up and countered with some punches of his own and a forearm off the ropes on Ferris. The Dog then picked up Ferris and got him up for the big thump power slam for the pin. Up next was Bob Root beating Jesse Barr after a leg drop for the pin. During this match, Watts mentioned Steve Dr. Death Williams. Crowd chanted Paul number one at Bob Roop. This match had some good technical wrestling to start. Barr controlled the match early on and even got a near fall on Roop with an inside cr cradle. Roop then gained control after using some rougher tactics, which included stomping on Barr. Barr recovered and got Roop with a German suplex. Roop reached the ropes and then hid and behind the referee and eventually snuck caught Barr with a sneak attack which led to him catching Barr with a leg drop for the pin. The show then closed with Mr. Olympia versus Ron Cheatham which ended with a TV time limit draw. Watts talked about Dr. Death again and admitted that he's been recruiting him for pro wrestling. 
Watts also mentioned next week they'd have Ernie Ladd and the Assassin versus the Samoans. And in two weeks, they'd have the popular girl wrestlers in action on Mid-South Wrestling. This was a pretty good TV match that doesn't get a finish due to TV time running out as Mr. Olympia had Cheatham in a sleeper hold as time ran out. I thought this was an okay show with the highlight being Ernie Ladd's mystery partner being revealed as the assassin. Most of the matches on this episode were competitive but were kept pretty short. Best match on the show was Tully Blanchard versus Kokoa Samoa. Watts mentioned Steve Williams which starts the build up for his arrival which is a few months away. That's it for this review. Be sure to subscribe to the Retro Wrestling YouTube channel and we'll be back again soon with more reviews.